So today, I want us to think about the success story of Nehemiah. Not too many Christians know about this character in the Bible. You know, back in the Old Testament, a lot of books named by prophets. Nehemiah was not a prophet. He was just an ordinary person who became so successful financially and politically. You know, we know the story, right? King Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem, but after that there was battles, and then Israelites were captured as slaves. Temple in Jerusalem tumbled down. So all the Israelites went to different countries as slaves. Nehemiah was living as a slave in the kingdom of Persia. And yet, he became, you know, like the Bible says, he became the cupbearer. And you're thinking, okay, so he became like a waiter to king's table. No, he was more than that. Because then, back in the old days, we're talking about thousands of years ago, where kingship and his, his system of running the country was really simple. King had all the power. He made all the decisions. So he's like officials or like a chef in the kitchen or someone who is in charge of drinks, wine, like parties and events. And these were very important, influential people to the king because they're the ones who get really close to the king they're the ones who can have private conversation with king. So if you really think about that, these were powerful people. Like person who makes food, or person who is in charge of drink, or the ten table to the king. So it was a huge success. It was a huge honor for Nehemiah to become the cupbearer to the powerful king of Persia. And it was no coincidence that he became that successful. Financially, politically, a lot of other ways he became such a powerful person. And later on he will become, he will become the governor of Jerusalem. And he will foresee the whole construction site to rebuild the temple wall. And then he will lead Israelites come back to God. Okay, so we're talking about this great success story of a slave becoming the governor of Jerusalem. Now let's look at the Bible and see why God blessed him so much, how he was able to become so successful from slave to the governor. One thing Nehemiah had was his sincere care for his people. So he was living comfortably in that castle with King Persia. He was rich, he was powerful, and he was living such a good life. And then he hears this news from his hometown, Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem is tumbled down. A lot of people died and they got sick and they scattered all over as slaves. Tragedy happened to your hometown. He heard the news. And Nehemiah says, When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. You can see how tender, you can see this caring heart Nehemiah had for God's people. You know, we talk about God's love. We talked about being a good Samaritan. But when was the last time you, when was the last time I cried for someone else? You know, we cry when bad things happen or when we get hurt or sick. Maybe we cry for some bad things happening to us or our family with close friends. But we're talking about the Hamonia living very comfortably in this great city 
in, in the Persia kingdom, hundreds of miles away from Jerusalem. And, and he heard about this tragedy happen in, in Jerusalem, and he has such a compassionate heart for the people in Jerusalem. He cried and he prayed. You know, it's this kind of quality. God saw this tenderness and compassion in Nehemiah's heart. God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you so successful. You are, you were a slave. You know what? I'm going to make you one of the most powerful people in this kingdom of Persia. I'm going to make you the governor of Jerusalem. We have our wishes. We have our goals. We want to be successful. What do we have to do to begin with? Have compassion for people. Not only for your family and friends, but look around your school, your neighbor, and just a lot of people that you don't even know so closely. We need to have this compassion for the humankind. And when God says that, He will bless us. He will put such blessing on our, our pathway, for sure we will become successful. Not only he had compassion for people, he earnestly prayed for others. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you. He fasted. He didn't sleep. He didn't eat. He prayed for the people of Jerusalem. You know, this makes us think a lot about uh, what we pray about, what we pray for. You know, I'm not saying it's bad or wrong to pray for ourselves, pray for our family and friends. We should. That's good. But our prayer shouldn't be limited as such that we only pray for those we love. You know, there are a lot of other people who need our prayer. We need to open our spiritual eyes more widely and, and enlarge our horizon and see all these people who are longing for our prayer. And that's what Nehemiah did. He probably never met these people, most of these people in Jerusalem. But he cried. He prayed. He fasted. I mean, he didn't eat. He didn't sleep. He just kept on praying for these people. And that was kind of heart Nehemiah had. And that was the quality that God saw in this person, Nehemiah. And this is the way to become successful in God's way. It's totally different from what the world is telling us. The world is telling us to be smart and be competitive and you have to have the edge. You have to be faster and stronger and you have to beat on other people to become successful. Well, it works in the worldly way. But it's not going to last because our life is limited. There is much better way. There is such blessed way to, to become successful in this world. And that is the godly way. And that's when God sees this compassion and qualities in our hearts. He will make our path straight. He will bless us and guide us. And He will make us successful. So I guess that choice is upon us. We all want to be successful. It's either the worldly way or the godly way. We need to be we need to be smart and, and wise to make that right choice. It says in the First Timothy, Apostle Paul is saying, I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, thanksgiving be made for everyone. Do you remember I talked about this, you know, the different types of prayer? And one type of prayer that a lot of people are lacking is the intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is, is prayer that you pray for someone else. I wouldn't call praying for your family and friends intercessory prayer. And that's too close. 
because the Bible considers your family is you. Your family and you are one. So praying for your family is good, but it is not intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer means that you pray for someone that you don't know too well. Intercessory prayer is praying for someone who maybe don't deserve your prayers, like those prisoners in jail, like those bad people that everybody hates. But as Christians, we need to pray for those bad people. Otherwise, who would pray for those bad people? If all Christians only pray for the ones they like and love and good and friendly, then all those other people who need more prayers, you know, those bad people, criminals, and all those cheaters, and, you know, they need more prayers, but no one is praying for them. And Bible is, well, can you think about that? God, God loves you, God loves your family, and, and God knows that you're praying for your family and friends, and that's all good. But don't forget to pray for those bad people. Well, not necessarily that, but pray for those not so close people that you don't have concerns for. And Nehemiah had that courage and sensitivity to pray for all these people. And God liked that, and God saw that as the quality to be successful. Intercessory prayer. If you want to become a more, if you want to become more mature Christian, you have to put more weight in your prayer. So pray for someone else. Pray for other people. Pray for enemies. Pray for strangers. You know, actually, the Bible is full of passages tell us to pray for like many people that you don't even have relationships with. By politicians in South Africa. You don't even know them. But the Bible says pray for them because it concerns you. We are all like living in this same world. In that sense, we are related. We are related in the state of humanity. So pray for those rulers of different countries that you don't even know. Pray for like principals and teachers and you don't have personal you know, understanding of. So we have to really, really think about what we pray for and those people that we need to include in our prayers. Because that is one very important element of becoming successful in God's way. Nehemiah was bold. He was straightforward when, when it comes about blessing. Nehemiah prayed to God, Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. You know, this was just before Nehemiah went to the king and talked about going back to Jerusalem, rebuilding the wall of the temple, and leading his people. We're not talking about like short-term like trip here. Nehemiah knew once he made this trip back to Jerusalem, it will take years, maybe whole life, to, to God's task. He understood that. So this was a huge risk Nehemiah is about to take. And before he went into the presence of Persian king and asking for the king's permission and support, he prayed to God, Give me success. I have the purpose of praying for success. You know, that's the problem with a lot of success prayers these days. You have the goal. You want to become a certain career. You want to become rich, famous, powerful, health, healthy. You have certain goals for your prayer of blessing success. That's good except there is really the key element missing. Where is the purpose of success? To make a lot of money, to become an influential person is your goal. 
it, it, it's not your purpose. That is the problem with a lot of people's prayer this day. They only have the goals. They don't have the purpose of prayer of success. If there's no purpose, it is not going to be granted. Nehemiah had clear purpose. God, bless me. God, made me successful. God, made me powerful and rich. So I can use all those resources to go back to Jerusalem and do your will. Rebuilding the temple leading your people back into your presence. What do you pray about? What is your goal in your life? More than that, what is your purpose of success in this life? As long as we have clear purpose that fit into God's will, He will grant us success. God will make you rich, God will make you powerful. God will make you successful in your choice of career and your profession. As long as you have a clear purpose that fit into the line of guidance of God's way. Well, let us take that into our meditation and prayer. Once again, let us think about what we want to achieve in this world. What is your goal of success? There are two different ways, the worldly way, the competition way, and there is the other way, the godly way in His blessings. Of course, God's way is much better and much longer lasting. We have to pursue, we have to urge after God's way of success, His blessing. To do so, to have that godly success, the Bible tells us, you need to have the compassion. Compassion for the people. You have to pray for other people. And you need to have a clear purpose. Clear purpose of your longing of success. So it is not what, but it is why. Why do you want to be successful? Think about that. Let us take a moment. Father God, we thank you for leading us to church in your presence. We thank you for giving us this wonderful message from the Bible, how Nehemiah became from servant, slave, to the governor, one of the most powerful people in the kingdom of Persia. Lord, we want to have success in our lives too. But help us to refocus and help us to understand how to become successful in your way in your blessings. Not only we have purposes, not only we have different conditions, but help us to find your will, your, your, your guidance as to find wonderful godly purpose in our wanting of being su successful. Help us to have Jesus' heart, His compassion within our hearts, to all our neighbors and all the people we don't even know that we are, we need to be concerned about. Lord, help us to be compassionate and earnestly praying for all the people so we can have the guarantee of God's blessings and our success. 
Father. Help us to follow your footsteps, just like Jesus was, fulfilling the purpose of his Father God on the cross. We want to make fruits within this life, following the purpose of your mission in this world. We thank you for your grace and message. In Jesus' name we pray.